Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Christmas Eve service. I am Pastor Pamela Kipps, and it is a joy to welcome you to Fairfax United Methodist Church. If this is your first time joining us for worship, we want to extend a special welcome to you. We are so glad you're here. I'd like to invite all of you now to join me in an opening prayer. Oh God, our Father, you brought us again to the glad season when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that his spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day, and that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us. Open our ears that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old. Open our lips that we too may sing with uplifted hearts. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And now with joyful hearts, I invite you to lift up your voices and give praise and glory to your God. Savior Jesus Christ. Tonight we remember the words from John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. We light this candle now in celebration of the love that God poured out into the world. Emmanuel has come. Praise to bring him God. 
them to this devotion time on Christmas Eve. And thank you for assisting this church in keeping the faith another Christmas Eve. This church has kept the faith in Christmas through a civil war, through world wars, and through multiple economic and social upheavals. And once again, in an unfurred year, this church is keeping the faith at Christmas. And more importantly right now, you are keeping the faith on Christmas Eve. Whether you're worshiping by video or in person, you are keeping the faith in Jesus Christ during this holy time of year. Keeping the faith is never easy. It requires work. But God bless you in a very special way, particularly this year, for how you have kept the faith. Want to read scripture from Luke chapter 2, the King James Version? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one, into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in an manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. This is the word of God for all of us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Growing up, I probably had a similar experience that you had or still have. That decorating the Christmas tree was a bit of a sacrosanct special family time. There was special food, special snacks, Christmas playing on the record player, and we would come together to decorate the tree, all in a good mood, except two stressors that usually occurred every Christmas time while decorating the tree. The first was trying to get the tree to stand straight and stand. Some of you remember the days long before Christmas tree stands had been perfected, and getting the tree to stand straight took extra effort. The other stressor that took place for my family looked something like this. Putting Christmas out is a lot more fun than putting Christmas back. 
And when we put Christmas back, we would just take the tree lights and crumple them together and put them in the tree box, only to discover a year later that these needed to be untangled. Untangling Christmas tree lights is something that no one really enjoys. In fact, there's a British supermarket by the name of Tesco uh, that for a uh, fee, uh, you can have your Christmas tree lights untangled by a professional tree light untangler. You can even get a job as a Christmas tree light untangler, provided uh, that you can untangle about three meters of lights every five minutes. Tangled and untangled. Think about the Christmas story that I read to you a moment ago from the beloved Luke chapter 2. When you think about it, it isn't necessarily a Hallmark card scene. Rather, this story is a narrative of a lot of things being tangled. Joseph and Mary thought they were going to go about their ordinary lives, raising a family together, but both are told in the course of time that this Messiah who's on the way, by the way, you will be the earthly parents of this holy child who will come and save the world. Palestine during that time is an occupied area of the Roman Empire. There's a taxation and a census, and Mary and Joseph being great with the child, as the King James Version of the Scripture describes it, must go all the way to Bethlehem in order to be registered and pay their tax. When they arrive, there's no room at the hotel, and they must go to a stable. And there Mary must place her firstborn child in a feeding box. There are shepherds who get unexpected news, who come running to visit Mary and Joseph and the baby. It's a very hectic and tangled scene, this very first Christmas narrative. But notice how it ends. We see Mary pondering in her heart. That word that is translated pondering in the King James Version of the Scriptures comes from the Greek word santereo. Sante Reo means to treasure. And it doesn't have to be a treasure like gold coins in a pirate's chest. We can treasure a sunset. We can treasure a simple but beautiful meal. We can treasure a friendship or time with a friend. We can treasure a very simple gift given or received with a lot of heart. Mary is doing more than thinking or reminiscing. Mary is treasuring. She's showing the untangling of that very first Christmas Eve night. In the midst of all the hectic scene, there is Mary untangled. Honor, treasure. When we treasure, the priorities in our life line up right. They line up correctly. When we are treasuring, we become untangled because we revisit again what's really the most important, and all the rest can wait. And that's what Mary models to you and to me on this very holy day and night. Now make no mistake, Christmas Eve is more than a sentimental God moment or a common enjoyable story from sacred text. Please know that Mary is very well aware of what that evening really means. God with us, Emmanuel, the Messiah, the Savior has come to ultimately and completely untangle us 
from sin and death so that we may live abundant, rich, and full and forever. On this Christmas Eve of a year that is certainly not preferred in many ways, may Mary be our model, our champion, our example. May we ponder, may we treasure what's really important. And above all, may we treasure what God has done for all of us in the baby of Bethlehem. Amen. In response to the spoken word of hope and celebration, I invite you all to lift up your voices now as we share the Apostles' Creed, our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, broken and given for you. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you the cup of salvation. You are invited at this time at home or wherever you are at this moment to consume the elements that you have with you. On this night we have heard a message of hope. The Lord has broken through time and space to bring us a gift of salvation. Let us lift up our hearts in prayer together and give thanks to God. O oh God, you revealed yourself most lovingly in the face of the child of Bethlehem. Hear us give thanks for that gift, Lord, and thanks for those who reveal your love in the world. Thank you for those who do their best toward their brothers and their sisters, for those who serve and those who mend. Thank you for those who sacrifice of themselves for the benefit of others. We give thanks for those who speak and live in healing ways, and those who offer hope to those bound up in poverty and despair. We pray for all those who reflect your beauty as you did in the gift of your Son, Jesus. We hold up in prayer this evening, Lord, the lonely and the hurting, the hungry and the homeless, the sick and the dispossessed, knowing that your heart has always been close to those who are poor in spirit. We pray for comfort and strength to those who are weary. We pray for encouragement for those who are grief-stricken. And we pray, Lord, that relationships that are broken would be mended. As we remember this night your coming to flesh in us, for us, we ask that you would hear our prayers. Bless us and bless your church, that we might turn our hearts to be food for the hungry and hope for those who are lost and alone. And may all who drink of your spirit tonight be touched. May they find meaning and belonging in this space. Cast out our sin, Lord, and enter in. Pour out your spirit upon us. Let your Son become flesh in us, so we might reveal to the world the grace of and the profound love of the holy child of Bethlehem. Be born in us today. Amen.